I did it again? Oh, no good. Gotta hit that mute button. We should be good. All right. Time to get cracking. 23 folks in here. Gonna get a little bit more. You should be all right with the sound. We're good. All right. Remember we finished yesterday and Jesus was carted out of Bethlehem, out of Egypt, I have called my son. He went into Egypt. He was um, there fleeing the evil Herod who's coming for him. Um, alerted by the wise men on when the Christ, when the star appeared, the Herod now knows the place and the time. And now he's going to tend to business. He's going to wipe out the one born king of the Jews, whose star in the east is the signal to... Um, <laughs> How are you posting on Facebook when you're right in front of me? Let's get to it one more time. There you go, bud. All right. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the Magi, um, the word for tricked here is the same word for ridiculed. So what you've got basically is that Herod, because he is outsmarted, because he is, um, because he's outsmarted, believes himself to have been mocked. So, um, so he's tricked, he's outsmarted, he's mocked. So he sees that he's been um, outsmarted. He becomes thumoth, ethumothe, which thumos we had early in, in a previous Bible study was part of that word that, that, um, uh, had Joseph pondering, this is flat out rage. He is uh, past tense, passively rage. He becomes enraged. Um, and not just somewhat, a lot, very enraged. So he becomes furious. He, what he does is he um, apostolizes. He apostles uh, to execute all the children. So he sins to execute all the children in Bethlehem, all the male ones, and in all the region who are two years old and under. So this is why we, we're, we're pretty certain that the wise men don't show up at the birth of Jesus. Perhaps the best thing to do with your nativity scene is to start the, 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 king, the wise men far, far away. And they get closer and closer and closer as you get closer to January 6th and boom, January 6th, they're there. Um, uh, <laughs> oh man, Thor's on Facebook. You do look good on the camera, buddy. But okay, so, but as they get closer and closer and closer and closer, um, Herod though, I wouldn't say that they were two years old when, when he, when the, he was two years old when the, when the wise men got there, I would probably say he was at least a year. You want to think that, that Herod is going to do something that is over the top. He's going to make sure that he exterminates everyone. If he kills all the young children in Bethlehem under two, then if the star appeared a year ago, then he's going to get them all. Um, <laughs> Great Saban reference. He's furious like Nick Saban when he's losing to LSU on the sidelines. Wow. Thank you. My HT cup. HT store. Get that HT merchandise. Um, feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, I think that's what Thor's trying to communicate to you. There's some very, very wise people in this live stream. I see, I see uh, 
Pastor Lestico there. There's some very, very smart uh, folks here. If I don't answer it, if I don't see it, they will grab it. The delay is about a minute, a minute and a half between what I see and what you see. And so um, somebody's going to answer your question. Uh, and if that answer is wrong, then somebody will help you. All right. So we want to make sure that we understand that the wise men um, are, are going to, they, 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 the, the wise men leave, Herod's infuriated, Herod wants to kill all the babies. He doesn't want to kill the babies because he's, he's been tricked. He wants to kill all the babies because he wants the king of the Jews. He wants to be the only king of the Jews. So he must kill Jesus. He's just mad because they outsmarted him. And it wasn't they that outsmarted him. It was God that outsmarted him. Remember that God's the one that warned the wise men to go a different way home. I'm going to have to avoid Jerusalem on our way back. So two years old and younger, according to the time in which he had ascertained from the wise men. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. Third Old Testament reference. Third Old Testament reference. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to fulfill what was spoken by the old, in the Old Testament. A, a, a voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted because there are no more. I want you to just sort of grasp this. Those babies die in order to shield Jesus. These infants die in order to shield Jesus. They're the first martyrs. Stephen is the first martyr in the Christian church. But those babies die because of Jesus. Because of Jesus, they die. Herod's rage against them. Um, it's, it's also important to to understand when this is celebrated in the church because it'll teach you a little bit about the church here. This, this um, the death of the holy innocents, the, the holy innocents, martyrs, is celebrated on the 28th of December. And if you know your calendar, that is one of the 12 days of Christmas. It is actually the one, two, three, four. It is the fourth day of Christmas which teaches you a little bit about the birth of Jesus. The birth of Jesus isn't just time for presents and treats. Good catch, boy. The birth of Jesus brings suffering. Believing in Jesus brings suffering. Suffering for him. Suffering for those around him. And suffering for you. This is... This isn't just, um, if you were opening up the pamphlet on Christianity and it said, you will suffer for his name, you probably would put the pamphlet down. But that is the truth of the Christian faith. Um, were they in lockdown? Did they know it was coming? Um, these babies die without warning. Because again, nobody knows, nobody cares about the birth of Jesus. The wise men come into town, that would have made a ruckus, but they wouldn't have, they wouldn't have known. I mean, things settle down, the wise men leave, Joseph has a dream, he leaves, and then all Hades breaks loose in Bethlehem as these babies are slaughtered. Thank you, Cassie, good question. These babies are slaughtered for no other reason other than Herod's lust for power. And what you need to know as a Christian is that the same hatred that the world that Herod had for those babies, those babies, those babies, those holy innocents, the same hatred that um, the same hatred that they that, that he has for those babies is the hatred that the world has for you. The world wants you to compromise. They want you to change. They want you to to submit. They'll blame you for everything. He is four for four. The world wants that. By the way, if you concept, if you, um, if you, 
If you bend, the world will praise you for a day. And then they'll go right back to their persecution of the Christian faith. No, I don't want to get into that. I don't... I... Best to just keep it to myself. I was going to say, um, I saw on Twitter today... Um, Molly Hemingway's husband responding to folks that said this was all the evangel the plague is the evangelicals' fault. The virus is the evangelicals' fault. Just let it go. Let it go. We don't want anything to do with that. But that's the world the way the world thinks of it. You shouldn't be shocked by it. That's the world, the way the world thinks of it. That's the way the world thinks of us. And that's right smack in the middle of the Christmas season in order to teach you that, you know, while you're opening your presents and you're looking at your tree and you got your family all around you, the world will kill you for this. If they get their hands on you, they will kill you. And I'm not just wearing an aluminum hat. The world will kill you for this. Back to the text. And Rachel won't be comforted because her children are dead. Her children in Bethlehem are dead. Herod, when he died, when Herod died, he do. Okay, Thor. Herod, when he died, when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord. This is, um, we don't know because Matthew doesn't tell us. In the Old Testament, the angel of Yahweh is synonymous with God himself. Um, uh, we don't know this in Matthew's gospel because the messenger of Yahweh, Jesus, of burning bush fame, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego fame, um, I would tend to believe that this is simply an angel, a messenger of the, of the Lord because the angel, of the messenger, the messenger from the Old Testament um, is fled to Egypt. He appears in a dream to Joseph. One more dream for Joseph. Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who sought the child's life are dead. And so the Lord is running all of this, turning all the evil that goes on around the birth of this child into good, uh, turning... And that's what he does. God takes evil and turns it into good. If you don't believe that God is going to make good out of this virus, then you don't know God. The God who, all you got to do is don't look around you, turn off the TV, turn off Twitter. I shouldn't have looked at it earlier today. Turn off Twitter and fix your eyes on the suffering and death of Jesus. And then you will see God making good out of evil. The death of Christ is the most evil event in the universe that has ever happened to anyone. And he makes it good. He saves you. He saves you. Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel for those who sought the child's life are, de are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother. That's very Hebrew. Very, very Hebrew. So many chunks of the Torah, the first five books of Moses, begin the same way. God says to do this. And then... God's people do this. It's, it's like God says to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and God's people do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, for the most part. That's what's so strange about Jonah. God said for you to go to Nineveh, and he goes to Tarshish. It's just weird. Here, very Hebrew-minded, very Hebrew. And he rose and took the, go, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. He rose, took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. You could tell who's writing it. Hi, Zach. Thanks for joining us. You could tell who's writing this by the way the language is, is structured. And we heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judah in place of his father, Herod. Archelaus is a bad cat too. I haven't sung yet. Archelaus is b -b 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 bad is that a little ZZ Top? He was afraid to go there. And being born in yet another dream, he went to a district of Galilee. 
Um, there's no logo? Oh no. Where'd the logo go? Logo's gone. Gone, logo, gone. Oh, there it is. I'll pull it down here. There it is. Um, he went and lived in a city called Nazareth. I'm using the example of East Baton Rouge and West Baton Rouge Parish yesterday to describe Bethlehem. Bethlehem is a podunk town that nothing good comes out of. Nazareth is podunk's podunk. If nothing good came out of Bethlehem, nothingist that had everist been goodest has ever come out of Nazareth. I think you know what I mean. You could not have picked a more nowhere place for God to come. For God to live. For God to be. <laughs> yes, I sing as bad as I identify singers. I don't know. It's the ADHD. Sometimes I'm... I, I, I don't know what's up, what's down, what's anywhere. He went to live in a city called Nazareth and that which was spoken by the prophets, plural. He shall be called a Nazarene. Okay, so I want you to take note of this. He does not identify the reference. And that's important. This is Matthew saying, you know, it's somewhere in the Old Testament. It's, it's, it's it, you know, the Bible says somewhere. A lot of ink spilled on this. Folks trying to figure out what he's talking, where is he, what, what, where's this reference from? Um, there's a little word play going on. I think it has to do with um, Nazar, which is the Hebrew word for, well, it could be two things. Nazar is the Hebrew word for branch, as in branch shooting out of the root of Jesse. The dead stump of, Dave, of David's kingly line, out of it comes a sprout, a branch. David's line is dead, dead and buried. We had that in the genealogy. And now a sprout, a, a, a stalk comes out of the dead stump of Jesse's, uh, of Jesse's dead tree. That's the Christ. That could be what's going on here. Nazarene, Nazar. Also, the Nazarites in the Old Testament were those who were set apart for service to God. And Jesus is set apart. So whichever one you want to do, the the the... Reference to um, the, uh, uh, the the reference to Nazarites or the reference to Nazar. Either one, either one. You can't see Thor behind that thing. I'm gonna put it over here. Oh look, now there are two of them. That's just strange. Um, You, you just, I want you to just sort of, it's vague deliberately. I think there's no way to hear Nazareth and not hear Nazar. There's no way to hear Nazareth, not to hear Nazarite. And so there, this is vague deliberately. And that's why even its reference is vague. So he doesn't refer to a specific, specific Old Testament reference. Instead, he's like, it's in the Bible somewhere that he'll be called a Nazarene. But if you're looking at places to find God, Nazareth, isn't one of them. When I was in Conroe, when I served, I served in a, a, a town in Texas for 10 years, from 20, from 2000 to 2010, right outside of Conroe was a place called Cut and Shoot. Cut and Shoot. That was the name of the town. Would you think that you would find God in Cut and Shoot, Texas? Would you find God in Nazareth? Well, yes. You see, because this God this Jesus is so one of us, so for us, so like us, 
that he's in a place that we would never expect, right down in the nowhere place of Nazareth in Galilee, right in the lowest place. And he's there still for you in his gifts, in the lowest place, in the place you would least expect God to be, in your quarantine, lost in your, in, in your, um, in your isolation. There he is in his gifts. Thank you, Eric Lang. In his gifts, in his gifts, you'll find him in the word, in the water, in his body and blood. His, he is where you are, in the lowest of the low, in the lowest place, in the place no one would expect him to be. That's where he is. So we're rounding out the first two chapters of Matthew, done in record time for me, probably um, about an hour a chapter, but I want you to sort of grasp this. This Jesus is the son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of God. He is the Christ. And that means he's the seventh seven, 14 generations between um, Abraham to David, 14 generations between David to, to um, 14 generations from David to uh, the Babylonian exile, and then 14 generations in Babylon that's six sevens. He's the seventh. And that he is the Christ means he is God with us. He's the son of God, born of the virgin, whose name means he shall save his people from their sins. God with us, not God far away. God who suffers, who is Israel reduced to one. And he goes to Egypt and there he stays. And then he comes out of Egypt. Out of Egypt, I have called my son. And he goes to a no place, um, no place day, place called, um, uh, a no place town called Nazareth, where nobody could find him, where nobody cares. And there he's going to grow up. And there he's going to learn, uh, going to grow up. And we're going to find him again in chapter three on Monday at 2 p.m. So, Look forward to the Bible study, 2 p.m. I got to take a day off tomorrow, but I will join you on Monday at 2 p.m. Central, same bad time, same bad channel for us to join together again to go through the gospel of Matthew. But your eyes on this Jesus during this time, he is where no one expects him to be, which means he's here for you, even in your quarantine. Pastor George Borkart, thanks for being amongst us. Go to your church services tomorrow via stream. And, uh, and I'll be praying for you and your families to be safe.